On the last episode of the Main Street Chronicles, Brian and Stokes board a Jock Lindsay seaplane for yet another adventure, but this time to Mystic Point, New Guinea. Upon their arrival, they discovered Albert, the monkey, poking around the cataloging room. After ditching their guided tour to follow Albert and see what kind of trouble he may get into, they stumbled upon a hidden passage to only discover Lord Henry Mystic himself. He shared his story and finally set the stage for telling of the dark side of sea. This led our adventurers to a new destination to explore, Hotel Hightower in New York City. And more of the story of Harrison Hightower III's disappearance. New York Globe Telegraph reporter Manfred Strang helped our adventurers learn the meaning and location of the new symbol on their magical coin. Rushing back to the harbor, eager to start the next leg of their journey, they tell Jock where they are to head next. Jock knowing what was coming next, had already purchased two cross-country train tickets for them to head to Big Thunder Mountain to find Barnabas T. Bullion and uncover his connection. Welcome back to Episode 4, Gold Rush. We pick up with our adventurers boarding a train bound for Rainbow Ridge, Arizona to try to figure out how Big Thunder Mountain is connected to sea. Join our fearless adventurers as they chart a course around the world to uncover the mysteries of sea. All aboard! So, what do you think Jock meant by see you sooner rather than later? I don't know, but this whole time, even with these tickets, he seemed to be one step ahead of us. Almost as if this was destiny, or somehow mapped out for us. You know, I overheard him telling Alberta that we may be the next chapter. Tickets, please. Ahem. Tickets? Sorry, here you go. Rainbow Ridge? You know this hasn't been a stop on this route in years. Why on earth did you board this train? Rainbow Ridge, huh? Boy, that was a fun place. And your ticket, sir? Here you go. Discovery Bay? It's home for me. I thought that was just a myth, a a a legend. No, sir. It is my home when I'm not traveling. Well, gentlemen, enjoy your trip. So may I ask, what business you have at Rainbow Ridge? Sure. We're heading there to see if we can find Barnabas T. Bullion. Yeah, he's the owner of Big Thunder Mining Company. Oh, I know who he is. But I'm exhausted. I think I'm going to close my eyes. You fellas have a great trip. Tip your hat to Miss Abigail for me. Um, okay. What is it with people we meet on this journey, starting a conversation and not finishing it? Next stop! Rainbow Ridge? The mysterious man smiles from under his hat. Who could he be? What does he know that our explorers don't yet know? As our adventurers disembark the train and the dust settles, they look up to see a beautiful redhead atop of a chestnut mare. Welcome to Rainbow Ridge. Welcome to Rainbow Ridge? More like welcome to the Dust Bowl. What is this place? And who is that? Excuse me, gentlemen, but are you by chance Brian and Stokes? Why, yes. Yes, we are. Who are you? Why, I'm Miss Abigail Bullion, and I have been waiting for you to arrive. I overheard my daddy talking about you to one of his associates, and I jumped at the chance to meet the explorers from the east. So, I offered to meet you at the station and show you around. I actually just arrived myself. I was back east, uh, but things were... Let's just say, too stuffy for me. (laughs) Anyway, even though I'm new, I still know where to go and where not to go here in Rainbow Ridge. She sure does like to talk, but boy is she pretty. Hey, snap out of it. We're on a mission. Oh yeah, sorry. Abigail, is your father around? We really need to see him. Oh, he's busy taking care of some things in the mine. Things have not been going so well inside of her. Her? Oh, sorry. Big Thunder Mountain is a her. Uh, okay. So, what's going on with her? Well, my daddy is trying to obtain as much wealth from Big Thunder as possible. I'm afraid he may have gone too far. How could he go too far? Well, you see, Big Thunder is alive. (laughs) That's funny. How can a mountain be alive? Oh, you can't fight Big Thunder without Big Thunder fighting back. 
Daddy thought that this claim would be his easiest and largest ever, but it has caused nothing but trouble for him. Brian, remember when Alberta told us that she opened the Jungle Cruise up to spread her grandfather's message of preserving the world and her wild places? Maybe that's what we're meant to do. Maybe you're right. Abigail, is stopping your father from continuing to mine Big Thunder what needs to be done? Yes, he must be stopped. Yet no one seems to be able to get through to him. I can take you over to the manor, that's where Daddy's office is. Would that be okay with you? I think it may be best to do that. It looks like a storm is rolling in. Let's do it. Uh, how are we getting there? Come on, boys, bring him up! Uh, are you sure? Have you boys never ridden before? Oh, me and Jaggers have been together for a long time. <laughs> I'm not sure what I would do without him. I love horses. Let's get going. Nice horsey. Whoa. Uh... Okay, I think I'm good. At least I'm on. Okay, boys. Hope you can keep up. Ja! Uh, move, please. Welcome to our home. Let me take you inside and get you settled. Gentlemen, here is Daddy's office. Please make yourselves comfortable. He should be home soon. That storm sounds close, and knowing him, he'll want to be home and dry. Give a holler if you need anything. Thanks, Abigail. If I can do anything for you, just let me know. You never learn, do you? Hey, I'm just being friendly. <clears throat> Artemis T. Bullion, is it safe to assume that you are Brian and Stokes, the world travelers that we have all heard about? Yes, sir. And how do I know you are who you say you are? Never can be too careful these days, especially with what we are working on here. This should prove who we are. This coin proves nothing. It looks like a gold coin with my brand on it. You could have picked this up from anywhere in town. What? Wait a second. What's happening? Suddenly, the coin changes yet again to reveal a new symbol. Well, now that is something I wasn't expecting. I guess you are who you say you are. What happened? Well, son, it looks like this coin just changed to display something unique. Something I'm sure. You have never laid your eyes on. What is it? Well, it is one of the iconic buildings from Discovery Bay with the letters JC on it. That can only be one person. Discovery Bay? Brian, didn't we hear the conductor mention that on the train? Yeah, we sure did. Anyway, enough about him. Why are you here? Well, we're here to convince you to stop drilling in Big Thunder. You, sir, have gone too far. No, sir, you have gone too far. Just who do you think you are? We're on a mission to help protect the world and all of her wild places. And it sounds like Big Thunder may be the wildest place we've ever seen. Gentlemen, simmer down. Mr. Bullion, we aren't here to fight with you. We are just here to remind you of the oath that you took when you became a member of C. But it's my birthright! If you continue down this path, then you're no better than Harrison Hightower. Do you want to be met with the same fate? Well, lad, when you put it that way, which I've never thought of, you make a valid point. But what about all the jobs for the community and for the people? I'm sure they can find other work and probably at higher wages than you are paying. The way you've been treating this community and the land doesn't align with the values of C. But it's not too late for you to change your course and uphold your oath. Well, I'm still not sure. But I'll give it some thought. You definitely have made me realize what I need to do here and, and that I'm not holding up my end of the bargain. I now know what I must do, but I need to go speak to my foreman for his guidance. Now, there's a flood coming, so if you boys want to make that train, you better bundle up and head toward the station. I'm much obliged. You've helped correct my path, and I will forever be in your debt. Bolian hurries out of the room. 
let me guess, back on the horse? Yep. Brian and Stokes say their goodbyes to Abigail and bundle up to try to stay dry on their ride to the station, hoping to get there just before the tracks flood. adventurers get into town. As they approach the station, they hop off of their horses, tie up, and head towards the ticket booth. Two tickets to Discovery Bay, please. Discovery Bay. Discovery Bay. Oh, here we are. Thank you. All aboard! Our adventurers find their seats and settle in for the long ride to Discovery Bay. Tickets? Tickets, please! 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 You're back and going to Discovery Bay, no doubt. Hey, are you following that other fella? What other fella? That quiet fella that was sitting next to you. His stop was Discovery Bay, and just like your stop, it was magically there. Magically there, huh? Yeah, magic. Sure. Well, safe travels, gentlemen. I sure hope he changes his ways and heeds our warning. I hope so too, Tickets. but Tickets, I'm please. not going to lose any sleep over it. Tickets. Speaking of sleep, wake me up when we get Tickets. there. Tickets, please. Tickets. Next stop! Ah, here we go again. Discovery Bay! Brian and Stokes disembark from the train to see a lone man standing on the platform with his hat pulled down low over his eyes. Could it be the man from the train? Hey, aren't you the guy from the train? Yes, sir. Jason Chandler at your service. JC, huh? Does this JC point to you? Brian shows Jason the magical coin. It sure does. I was wondering when you were going to get here. You were? We've heard your name a few times along this journey, but we didn't know how it was all tied together. Why didn't you say anything on the train? The time wasn't right. I knew you would find your way here. Come on. I'd like to show you Discovery Bay. Fellas, check this out. Jason moves out of the way to reveal Discovery Bay in a cove below the train station. Wow. What is this place? This is Discovery Bay, a place for explorers, adventurers, scientists, and thinkers from around the world to showcase their ideas and talents. After leaving Rainbow Ridge and the mess that old Barney got us into at Big Thunder Mountain, I knew I had to get out. Old Barney? Are we supposed to know who that is? <laughs> you were just in Rainbow Ridge. I know you know who Barnabas T is. I sure hope you actually met him. I feel like the winds of change are coming and something new is on the horizon. Boy, I sure do hope that I'm right. Come on, let me take you down to the cove and show you around. Hold on, you can't just leave us hanging there. Sure I can. I'm the one telling the story. Just follow him. Eventually we'll find out what's going on. Hey, so how are we getting down there? See that thing that looks like a balloon? Yeah? Climb aboard my own personal dirigible. That's how we are going to get down there. I am going to fly us down. All of this looks really impressive. How did you end up here? Well, actually, I founded it. As a city that would always be focused on discovery and expansion. That is why I opened my doors to anybody and everybody with an eye on the future. I guess that explains all the crazy stuff we see. I mean, submarines, rapids, giant cogs, and is that a fireworks factory? 
There's a lot of unique stuff here. In Discovery Bay, anything is possible. As a community, we help take individual ideas and help bring them to reality. So, you mentioned you founded this place, but you seem to know quite a bit about Rainbow Ridge and the Bullions. What is your story with that? Well, I was just a young inventor, back at the height of the Big Thunder Gold Rush. But I was always eager to prove myself. I designed and built a drilling machine that had the capability of digging straight to the heart of the mountain. Wow, that sounds impressive. Glad you think so. Everybody back then laughed and thought I was crazy. But one day there was a cave-in at the mines that trapped almost 30 workers. They surely would have been goners if my drilling machine hadn't been there. I was able to use it to dig down and tunnel them a way out. You are a true lifesaver. Well, the story's not over. Before I could make it out myself, an earthquake shook the mountain, damaged my drill, and left me with no way out. What is odd is right before the quake hit, I swear I saw a blue light in the mountain as almost as if it was consciously causing the ground to shake. So how did you manage to get out? I was able to make some repairs to the drill and dig out a different way. So, why does there seem to be animosity coming from Bullion? You saved his employees, he should be in your debt. Animosity? We are still friends. This incident just drove us a little bit apart. In fact, he still uses my drilling machine after I sold it to him several years ago. What came between us is what I did with the gold when I escaped from the mountain. I realized that amount of gold could have the potential to corrupt anyone. So I took the gold and used it to build Discovery Bay as a place for anyone to settle, especially those with a crazy idea. Sometimes, all they need is someone to take a chance on them, just like me with that old drilling machine. Well, gentlemen, here we are. Welcome to Discovery Bay. Take a look around. You never know what may be around the next corner. Make sure you have all your things before you take off. Hey, uh, Stokes, the, uh, the coin's missing. What? Hey, are you okay? You look like you just lost your best friend. Well, since this journey began way back at Jock's, we had the magical coin that's led us to our next destination. I swear I put it in my pocket after I showed it to you. It's okay. You don't need it anymore. Huh? But our journey can't be over. Oh, it's just beginning. You probably know this already, but on top of founding Discovery Bay, I am also the president of C, and I'd like to share my story with you and take you on an adventure, if you are up for it, of course. Oh yeah. Our adventure seems to have come to a screeching halt, as the magical coin has mysteriously disappeared. Join our adventurers on social media as they begin to discover what Jason Chandler has in store for them next. In this episode, our adventurers learned about two very different members of the Society of Explorers and Adventurers. First, they were introduced to Barnabas T. Bullion, who has lost his way and turned his back on his oath. Then, our adventurers finally discovered the identity of the mysterious man on the train, who was none other than C. President Jason Chandler. Now join us as we take a closer look at the attractions that help tell their stories in the Disney parks. Walt Disney World's Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, and the unbuilt Discovery Bay at Disneyland. Big Thunder Mountain is a classic attraction that can be found in many of the Disney parks around the world. You can find variations of the attraction at Disneyland in California, Walt Disney World, Disneyland Paris, and Tokyo Disneyland. Although each park's backstory for the attraction has its own unique details, the general theme and story arc is similar across the board. As the story goes, a gold rush in the late 1800s caused a seemingly poor mining town to quickly turn into a prosperous place to work and live. However, it is soon realized that the mining activity in the mountain is disturbing an area that is sacred and also cursed to the local Native American tribe. Because of the greed of the local miners, a great tragedy occurs near the mountain, which causes the Big Thunder Mining Company to shut down and leaves the town deserted. These tragedies are represented through natural disasters and appear as an earthquake in the Paris and the California versions a flash flood in the Florida version, and a tsunami in the Tokyo version of the ride. While Disney World's version of the attraction welcomes C to its storyline after the refurbishment in 2013. This reimagining of the backstory introduced guests to two brand new characters and members of C, Jason Chandler and Barnabas T. Bullion. 
Unlike some of the other attractions we featured, the characters in Big Thunder Mountain do not appear as animatronics, in audio form, or even on the forefront of the ride portion of the attraction. Instead, guests learn of the characters and their roles through a detailed and interactive queue. It is in the queue that guests were able to familiarize themselves with the Big Thunder Mining Company and discover the intentions of its president, Bullion himself. Through various letters and other items left around, guests learn of Bullion's belief that it is his birthright to drain the mountain of all of the gold that he can. It is through these letters found throughout the queue that Jason Chandler also appears and is identified as a successful young inventor that created a drilling machine that he has since loaned to Bullion to assist in his mission. Eagle-eyed guests may also notice a portrait of Bullion in the queue and recognize that his appearance was modeled after none other than legendary Disney Imagineer Tony Baxter. The story of Bullion, Chandler, and Big Thunder Mountain does not stop with the attraction, however. In 2015, Marvel Comics released a five-part series that helps give more life to the characters and the town of Rainbow Ridge. Discovery Bay was a land created for Disneyland Park in California that was never actually built. The land was designed by Tony Baxter in the late 1970s and was meant to be themed as a technologically advanced city in the San Francisco area sometime in the 1800s. Tony Baxter came up with the idea for Discovery Bay during a rework of Disneyland's Frontierland that saw the former attraction of Nature's Wonderland being replaced by Big Thunder Mountain. Baxter realized there was still more space that needed to be utilized and dreamed up Discovery Bay as a tie-in expansion of what could have been done with all of the gold from Big Thunder Mountain. According to the official Disney backstory, Jason Chandler founded Discovery Bay after he escaped from a mining accident at Big Thunder Mountain. Chandler used the gold he found in the mountain to fund much of the technological innovation that could be found in the land. Proposed attractions for the land included a submarine simulator featuring the Nautilus of 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, a journey aboard the dirigible Hyperion from Island at the Top of the World, a spark gap roller coaster using magnetic technology, and a shooting gallery where guests would shoot fireworks at targets. Besides the land, there was a proposal for a companion television miniseries entitled The Discovery Bay Chronicles that would have starred Pete Renaday as Discovery Bay founder Jason Chandler and would have told the story of the land. However, the failure of the film led to the project getting shelved. Unfortunately, despite the detailed plans for the new land, it was never built for various reasons, including the rising costs of both Epcot and Tokyo Disneyland, which were being put into place around the same time period. Despite the land never being built, Tributes to some of the attractions can still be seen in Disney parks around the world. For example, the fireworks shooting gallery helped inspire concepts for attractions such as Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin, and the same steampunk theme that is seen in Disneyland Paris's Discovery Land, also designed by Baxter, looks very similar to his concept art for Discovery Bay. Thanks for tuning in to Episode 4. We hope that you join us next month as we look to inspire you with one little spark. Tungaloosh! Much like Discovery Bay, Imagination Radio Network can be your avenue to express yourself and your ideas. If you have a passion or a dream, let us know. Reach out to us on social media or send us an email at info at imaginationradionetwork.com. Let us help you reach for the stars and uncover what could be your next adventure. Scrooge McDuck here, reminding you to go like, share, Comment, subscribe, and rate the Main Street Chronicles. I sure hope that me promoting them, they'll give me a raise.